Good morning, Dr. Yasmin. Morning. Can you hear me clearly? Is my yes. okay? Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, it's clear. Okay, can we have all of the participants to turn on your camera? So everyone's ready? Okay, uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Rabbi Shrahli, Sadri, Wa Yasirli, Amri, Walul Umdada, Minisani, Yafkahu, Kauli, Ya Arham, Arahimin. Assalamualaikum and good morning to everyone, especially Dr. Yasmin, Mustafa Kamil. And we have uh, Dr. Harun, uh, Chair for the 5 Minutes FYP competition. Okay, so today we will have with us on the grooming workshop, Dr. Yasmin Mustafa Kamil. Okay, uh, Dr. Yasmin is the 2018 uh, 3MT, 3 minute uh, thesis for Asia Pacific final winner and People's Choice winner. Okay, so before um, I go further, I, I'll share a bit about Dr. Yasmin. Dr. Yasmin Mustafa Kamil received her bachelor degree in biomedical science. University of Kumasa in Malaysia in 2012 and her doctorate degree in biomedical engineering from the UPM University of Malaysia in 2019. During her final year of PhD, she partnered up with her co-supervisor and another peer to form a startup company that specialized in providing fiber optic based laser solutions. This company is called In Laser Dynamics Never Had. Is that true, Doctor? Yeah, that's right. In laser or laser dynamic? In laser. In laser. Yeah. Okay, and today, Dr. Yasmin is the CEO of the company while continuing her postdoctorate studies in UPM. Okay, without further ado, let's welcome Dr. Yasmin to proceed with her sharing. Thank you. Okay, uh, Assalamu alaikum and a very good morning to everyone here. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me. Um, it's definitely a pleasure to be able to get this chance to share my experience and some tips to help you guys with your five minute FYP competition later. So uh, let me share my, my screen. Oops. Hey. So um, I'm Yasmin Mustafa Kamil, and uh, the title of this sharing session would be my not so three minute journey to prepare for my three minute speech. So um, as how uh, Lynn has told us uh, for my introduction, I was the winner of the 2018 3MP um, competition, which was unex unexpected actually. But um, although it may seem that it was this short speech, three minute. The preparation though took months for me to get to where I did um, that year. So um, let's get started. I'm gonna share with you what, went, what I went through. Okay, so hi, I'm Yasmin. Um, yes, I, I've earned a PhD and whatnot, but here I would like to highlight that. Um, I was born, uh, as an ordinary person, okay? And I grew up in a family of great speakers. And unfortunately, I'm the odd one out. Simply saying because uh, I don't see myself as a great speaker. And it's because I hate public speaking. I hate having to having a spotlight in me and having to speak to, uh, to um, the crowd, right? Um, but, Unfortunately, uh, but then again, all my family members are great at it. My dad works with a local newspaper, 
and he is a great writer. Okay, my sister, um, my younger sister. Okay, my younger sister. Even when she was young, her confidence level is limitless. Right, she can speak whatever she wants, uh, regardless of the grammar, regardless of however people are going to think about her. But she can just simply say whatever she wants, and I kind of envy that trait of hers because I'm not like that. Uh, and uh, right now, she is the um, communications associate of a communication company. So that's like double communications right there. So, uh, and my mom, although she may not uh, work as a speaker, but she is my mother. And whatever she says, we believe, whatever she says goes. So, in my opinion, that's a great speaker. But as for me, I am the kind, I'm the quiet child. So um, I get anxious when, I, when I'm told to speak, um, whenever people ask for my opinion, for my suggestions, I would have to think first. So uh, yeah, so it was quite hard for me to, to speak in public. And it's harder when everyone expects me to be good at it because of my family members. So, so the pressure, you know? Uh, and because of that, it led me to join a debate team. You know, I did not want to join it, but I was forced to. And it was a debate team. So debates are different because it's quite aggressive, right? And um, oh, I totally didn't like it. But, um, but what, what I learned uh, when I joined a debate team is that um, the preparation. You really need to prepare. So that's one thing. And second, when you're angry, when you have emotions, when you feel what you're trying to say, it gets easier because uh, it's relevant to you, right? So then um, right after that, I went for my matric matriculation. Um, yeah. And then uh, I joined a storytelling competition. <laughs> Again, I was not, um, I, didn't part I didn't volunteer, but they, they, they wanted me to do it. So, okay, I did it. And uh, I won that competition. But what I learned from there is that I like, uh, it's, a, it's a more laid back uh, situation. And uh, I like sharing what I, what I know and it's not aggressive. And I like teaching. Ah, yeah, I like teaching. Storytelling is something. So uh, it's all in here, right? So in the debate, during the debate, my mentality was, oh, I have to win. I have to convince people, uh, which was quite pressuring. But then when for my storytelling competition, it was more, I hope they enjoy my story. I like my story. I hope they enjoy it as well. So uh, all these things taught me that um, even though I hate public speaking, even though it's something I don't like, it's all in here. Right? And it's all how you set um, your mentality. So, so that's the platform that I want to lay out uh, this morning. Um, I know out there, not, not all of, I mean, I'm sure not all of you like public speaking, right? <laughs> uh, I don't think that many people do, especially us Asians. I don't know. I mean, that, that's what I think. But, um, but there are ways to do it, even though you don't like it. Right? I managed to do so, so I'm going to share with you how to do so. Okay, so a little bit on 3MT, considering uh, the, the competition that you guys are entering is very similar to 3MT. So what happened here was that uh, my co-supervisor one day told me, um, Yasmin, why don't you uh, participate in the faculty's 3MT competition? Again, I was being told <laughs> to uh, join. And I'm the kind of person who doesn't like to disappoint my supervisor. So whatever he says, I, despite however I feel about it, I would say, yes, sure, why not? You know, but in my head, like, oh, no, no, the public speaking thing, okay, but whatever. So um, I didn't know what it was. I thought it was a writing competition. You write your thesis in three minutes, which I find it ridiculous. How, how can you write your whole thesis in three minutes? And then I got to know you have to present your thesis in three minutes, like, Oh, okay, that's even worse, but okay. So uh, I went for it anyways. I went for the briefing and it's a competition. It's an initiative to um, 
for, for us students to convey to a, a generic audience on what we do in three minutes, right? And it was founded by the University of Queensland. Okay, so um, the rules, uh, there's only one slide, no extra media, meaning no animations, no um, videos, no props. Uh, you only have three minutes and you have to deliver your speech. And that's that. I think the same it applies to this competition as well, except that you have five minutes instead of three minutes. Okay, so um, then I thought, oh, okay, mm, I'll just blabber whatever I want in three minutes. But it was difficult because your research is an 80,000 word thesis and you only have three minutes to present it. Is it even possible? And then what if, you know, the normal things that I worry about whenever, it's whenever it comes to public speaking? What if I get too nervous? What if I forget my lines, say the wrong things, embarrass myself, can't answer the Q&A? Oh my God, you know? And I'm not. What if I'm not just fluent in English? I don't have the confidence. I'm not prepared. I'm not in my zone. And all of a sudden, you know, I start to have a panic attack. And then my supervisor said, no, it's okay. Uh, just write down what, what you think uh, that, that is important about your research. Go on to YouTube, watch the other videos, and just present what you can come up. And so I said, okay, and, and then uh, I figured that anything is possible when you have inner peace. So he managed to calm me down. I also um, went berserk to my friends and said, oh, how am I supposed to do this? They managed to calm me down as well. So once you're calm and collected, you'll be able to, uh, you know, uh, do it. So here are some tips that, um, that can make your presentation impactful, that can help with your presentation. So when I was uh, constructing my presentation, I knew that there were three main points that I had to tackle. One is the script. Second is the visuals, which is that one presentation slide. And third is how, I'm, if I, how I deliver the speech. Okay, and these are the points that I'm going to go through with you. So first is the script. The script is key. Okay, I know uh, some of you may feel very passionate about, if, about your work. Some of you may think, oh no, uh, my, as long as my, my work is important, as long as my work is impactful, it shouldn't matter how I present. As long as I have great results, it shouldn't matter how I present. That is wrong. Uh, in the end of the day, you have to convey your results to the public and how you convey it matters, right? So here, Alfred Hitchcock says, to make a great film, you need three things, script, the script, and the script. So the script is important. And before you do anything else, get your script straight first. Don't, don't do your, your presentation slide first, get your script first, okay? And it goes with these three steps. First, before doing your script, you have to know your audience. Who are they? What, what's their background? What do they like? What do they do, don't like? Um, what are relevant events that, that can be relatable to them? And what are their expectations? Okay, why is this important? Uh, say if I am to present my research to get funding, Okay. Do you think they're, they'll be interested much in the technical stuff? No, they will be more interested in the profit that I get at the end of the day, right? The profit that they get when they invest in my work. So I have to tailor my script to that. Say if I were to uh, present in front of children, if I were to tell them, okay, my work has the sensitivity of blah, 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 the accuracy is 98%, will the children appreciate that? No, they won't. So you have to know your audience in order to get your script right and in order to identify how you can convey your idea to them. And in your case, I'm not sure who the judges are for your competition, 
but um, I've been a judge before for uh, FYP presentations. And what I look for is um, one is how you, again, how you, how you convey your, I don't really look for great uh, experimental work. No, uh, because uh, that is, that is another thing, right? That, that should be your viva or your exams. But in this particular competition, what I would look for is how the students convey their idea. Okay, that's one. And second, how passionate the student is and do they really know what they're doing? And that all reflects in your script. Okay, so that's, that's what I look for if I'm a judge for your competition. Uh, I'm not sure uh, what, the, what the actual judges of your competition would, uh, would look for. Okay. So that's that. If I were the judge, if I were your audience, that's what you should tailor your script to. Make sure they know what you do. Make sure that they know you're passionate about it. And make sure they know you know what you're doing. Okay. So uh, next, establish your objective. Your objective. Like, why are you doing the presentation in the first place? So say if I were to get grants, to get funding, my objective is um, one, to get funding, or to be, it has to be more specific, to get a follow-up meeting with the investor later. Okay, so as for you guys, what, what are your objectives? Um, do you want them to appreciate what you do? Do you want to win the competition? Or do you just, are you just passionate about your work and you want to share it with the whole world? So once you establish these objectives, you will be able to relate more to your presentation. It won't be robotic, you know? Sometimes uh, you see presentations that goes, okay, the problem statement of my work is blah, blah, blah. Okay, the methodology of my work is blah, 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 blah. So it seems a bit robotic and your audience will definitely zone out. And apparently that's not, and this is not the platform for that. Uh, people will just simply zone out. So establish your objectives, say the things that you believe in, that you feel right. Okay, so once that and that, uh, once you know your audience, when you've established your obje objectives, it's time to brainstorm and organize your ideas. And um, how I organize my ideas is by using a speech canvas. You can use this speech canvas. I actually uh, uh, created this for you guys. <laughs> I didn't take it from anywhere. So um, you can take it, you can use it. So um, this speech canvas has three, has four uh, major categories. One is the hook. Okay, what, what does it mean by a hook? In a speech, before anything, you have to grab your audience attention. And that is by the hook. Okay, you call it the hook. So um, what do you say in the hook? You say, the problem that you are solving. You have to mention what, why you're doing this in the first place, or rather you have to set the, the, um, how, the scene for your audience, okay? So that they can relate to whatever you're saying in the end. For example, if I were to say, oh, I'm doing a dengue sensor right from the beginning, uh, will the audience appreciate it as much as I say, um, Malaysia is uh, suffering from dengue, uh, 10, 10 million people are dying from dengue, and we need a dengue sensor. So I'm proposing a dengue sensor. The audience will understand better if they understand the problem or the situation first. So in the hook, you have to identify what is the problem that you're solving. How big is the problem? And what happens if it goes unfixed? I have a, uh, an example here. Say I am an app developer and I would like to make an app that scans a curry pop feeling. You know, you know how some, most of curry pops today are like half empty and it's so annoying, right? Okay, so, so I would like to develop an app for consumers to scan the curry pop feeling. Okay, before they buy, they'll know if it's worth it or not. So what's about curry pops today are half empty. That's the problem. How big is the problem? Uh, I made this up, but say second leading cause of depression today. First being bad phone reception. <laughs> but yeah, okay. 
So what happens if it goes unfixed? Curry pop will cease to be a delicious delicacy. People will forget about curry pop. <gasps> That's a big thing. So then you go to your bait. Bait is where you propose your solution. Um, how, will you, how will your idea help fix the problem? And how do you realize your idea? So in this curry pop case, curry pop filling scanner phone app, that's my solution. How will this idea help fix the problem? It will assess the fullness of the curry pop. How do you realize your idea? Absorption, spectrum, spectrophotometry, and image processing. This is a bit technical at the end, but, but that's the idea, right? So that's how you put it. And then once you have the hook, you have the bait, comes the fish where you tell the audience your result. So the result of my app is 98% accurate. Then you highlight three uh, unique traits of your result. Okay, uh, three is a magic number. Almost everything that you say, it comes in trees, right? So uh, what's unique about your work? Highlight three traits. So here I would say, my curry pop scanner is accurate, accessible, and it can act as a traceability tool. Meaning, once I scan a curry pop here, uh, and it's half empty, the whole world will know this store uh, sells a half empty curry pop. And um, that's useful for the consumers. So how will that contribute to the society? It protects the consumer's interest, preserve the authenticity of the curry pop. So this is an example of how you can organize your ideas. Um, okay, so uh, I would suggest you to do this first. Because why? You only have five minutes, right? You can't uh, afford to be too technical in the five minutes. I know that most of you guys are from engineering and from IT. So um, engineering and IT are two very technical fields, right? So uh, in five minutes, you can't afford to say all, all of your technical stuff. So you have to extract these ideas, these important things, make sure that you convey these ideas to your audience. Okay, so now once you have your fish, you go to the farmer's market to sell your fish. But first, you have to know what kind of market are you going? Well, who, are, who, who are the people who are going to buy the, your fish, right? Are you going to the right uh, market to sell your fish? So again, here you have to... Uh, you have to understand who's your audience, what are your expectations, who are you, and what are your objectives, as how I mentioned before. So here's a tool that can help. Once you've organized your ideas, okay, so for the curry pop, uh, I am presenting in front of potential investors. Uh, they are looking for profit and outcomes. And yeah, I'm an app developer and I'm looking for a follow-up. So write, write all, all these down according to your situation. Oh, and uh, you can watch these videos. I understand that you will get the slideshow at the end of the presentation. So you can look at these videos, extract these points, and you will see that there's a pattern that all of these speeches have the same structure, and which is also a structure that you can follow, okay? And once you have all the ideas, it's time to write your script. Okay, so first you start with an opening. And it has to be grand. It has to be captivated, uh, engaging. So you have to start with a bang. How do you do that? Well, uh, there are many, um, many tools that you can use. One, you can tell a story. You can start off with your own experience, or you can start off with a current event. But make sure you start off with something that, one, your audience can relate to, to the audience decide to continue uh, listening to what you say, okay? It is your chance to set the scene. So uh, what I usually do in my speech, uh, I would open with, um, I would open with a fact or, or a saying that, that uh, connects to the audience that, that the, the audience can feel with what I'm saying, okay? You can, you can open with a question, right? That would, that would uh, intrigue your audience further. Or you can start with a joke. It all can happen. So for my 3MT thesis, I started with a joke, actually. 
So, um, which got the audience uh, happy and would continue to uh, listen to me. So it has to be relevant and memorable. Okay, so again, start with a bang. Introductions are very important. So uh, make sure you spend time there. So as you can see, I, I've also listed like a timeline where you have five minutes. Your opening should be about one to one minute and a half. Okay, so um, set the scene right. Uh, please make sure you emphasize on your opening. Okay, once you've done with your opening, you go to your solution proposal, to your experimental work, okay? So how do you start it? <clears throat> how do you start doing so? First, you say, so uh, in your case, you will go, um, so for my PhD work, this is what I'm doing, okay? Or for, for my uh, FYP, this is what I'm doing, okay? And once you do that, uh, men mention again the aim of your solution, okay? Remember in the opening, I said you have to uh, emphasize on the problem, okay? In the, solution, in the solution proposal, make sure you emphasize that your solution fits the problem. In my case, I'm doing a dengue sensor, right? I, I, yeah, a dengue sensor. And, um, um, sorry. Okay, so the problem with today's dengue sensors is that the detection time takes very long. So in my solution proposal, I highlight that this dengue, dengue sensor uh, is a rapid detection. It, it, it offers rapid detection, sorry, offers rapid detection. So there people can connect, oh, this is why you're doing uh, what you're doing. People will appreciate more what you're doing and they understand. And then after that, you explain how you create or how you develop your solution. Okay, here's where it gets a bit tricky because you tend, we tend to get very technical, right? So on my Deki sensor, I actually use an optical fiber. Uh, that's very technical. Not many people know what an optical fiber is. Even I didn't know when I first heard about it. I thought it has something to do with glasses, and spectacles. No. It's, a, it's, an, it's a, a fiber, an optical fiber. So um, I use that as my dengue sensor. Uh, but if I were to mention it that way, people wouldn't understand. So there are certain tools that you can use to, uh, to tone it down to the technicality and uh, people can understand you better. One is as how uh, Lam Jia Yong, if you follow his talk, said to use an analogies. Analogies work wonders because then people will be able to visualize what you did, uh, what you're trying to say. So you can use analogies. Um, other than that, uh, well, simply saying I love analogies, okay? So what I did was um, my analogy for my dengue sensor, I said that it was like walking through an aquatic tube. And you know how aquariums, they have those, those walkalators where you walk and then you see sharks and stingrays swimming above you? Well, I use that analogy as my tapered, as my optical fiber uh, sensor. So um, think about it. Think, how, think of an, an analogy that can explain your um, work. So once you've already tackled that, you come to the results and outcome. Here, you mention your results, highlight the, the main result that is relevant to the problem. So again, say if my dengue sensor um, um, does rapid detection, I would here highlight the, detect, the, the detection time takes only five minutes, let's say, okay? I have other results say like, oh, the sensitivity is 5.23 nanometers per, uh, you know, people go like, whoa, what's that, right? So, um, you have to tone down your, your the way you you uh, the way you convey your results. So uh, let's say, uh, and then you mention three unique traits again for your solution. And at the end, wrap it up with a close it on a high note. Okay, you don't go say, uh, and that is all. Thank you. Ah, that that's not memorable. You have to close it on a high note. Some people, uh, and I usually do this. I would relate it back to my opening. My opening and my closing usually have, share a certain relationship. I like to do that. Some people, they don't, don't do so, but it doesn't matter. 
whatever it is, you have to close it on a, close on a high note. Make sure it's memorable. So um, in my speech, I, uh, I did the dengue sensor as if it was a detective. Okay? So at the end of the speech, at the end of the, uh, of the whole thing, people came up to me and said, oh, you're the dengue detective person. That's how they will highlight me. Yes. At least they remember me, right? Uh, so, so that's how. That's why you, these things are important. That's how I know. Oh, you you were actually listening to what I said. What what I was saying. So these are the tips on writing your script. Okay, so let's go to step two, um, visuals, right? <laughs> and I came across this uh, picture, where uh, there's a saying called "death by PowerPoint." Okay, where where people present but does not um, pay attention to their visuals. So here uh, in this picture, you see the executioner shows a very boring presentation slide that that brings the, this person to death or something like that. So um, it's quite a unique picture here. And this is one of the examples of slides that can kill you <laughs> because for one thing there are too many words right um, who you won't want to be reading this also the background the contrast is very bad uh, and this is not the the kind of presentation slide that people, your, your audience will be engaged to okay so oh, this is another one color scheme is very important uh, this which is uh, cause this would just hurt your eyes and these things matter okay so uh, make sure you um, consider these points and so your audience will lose interest so reasons to why audience can lose interest is because one the speaker tends to read the slides to us and this happens mostly all the time uh, people think that your presentation slides some some will, will put the script on the presentation slides, and then we just read off the slide, which is not the point of having a presentation slide. It is not where you write your script. Okay, for example, you're about to say your problem statement on your presentation slide. It shouldn't write the whole problem statement. It shouldn't go problem statement. Huh? No. Uh, a presentation slide is supposed to help your presentation. It's supposed to. Uh, give a visual to what you're seeing. So if you were to just put text on your presentation slide, you are missing an opportunity to let your audience visualize what you're seeing. So a presentation slide should not be the presentation script. It should not fill with too many sentences and it should not distract your audience from what you're seeing because you are speaking, right? You don't want your audience to be paying attention to your slide and to be reading it and, not lose, and lose focus on what you're seeing. So it has to be something simple on your slide and something very concise and, and um, direct. Okay? So a presentation slide should be a visual aid. It should help your presentation. It shouldn't be the presentation. Okay? Also, it's a trail guide for you to, to remember your points. right? And it's also a trigger again for you to, um, to to know what you're what you're about to say and and remember again the points the key points that you want to tell. So this is an example of a 3MT slide from one of the competitions, uh, from one of the 3MT competitions, and this is a good slide. Why? Because here it shows directly the concept of what 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 the person is trying to do. So basically, he is trying to reverse the cell death of the hearing cells, okay? So if we get technically, let's, let's go technical with this thing. Hearing cells, I'm sure they are, there's an actual name for it, like a biological name for it, right? But they don't put it there because the audience wouldn't appreciate it. They won't know what it is. So instead they use hearing cells so that people know, oh, these cells help us to uh, hear. So, that's something that you have to consider as well. Terms, terminologies, um, try not to go too complex with it. Okay. Here's another one. Uh, so I guess his 
um, experiment is, is about image processing, okay? about radar imaging. So he just put the flow, basically his flow of his presentation. This is what we have in the state of the art. This is our future vision and what he is contributing to the future vision. So these are some examples of how your sites should be. Okay, now the third step is your delivery. So let's go back to my, uh, my story just now of how I hate public speaking. And because I hate it, it doesn't come naturally for me, I have to practice. Practice like practice, practice, and practice, and practice. <laughs> so, practice, practice, practice. So you have to practice again and again and again until, for me, I, I play the piano. So, and I'm quite musically inclined. So uh, I practice until my speech to me is a song. That, that well, if I close my eyes, if I take a bath, I can just like, oh, uh, say my speech like it's a song, like I'm singing the song. And you know how, how you don't have to think when you're singing, it just, just comes out of you? That's the level that you, it has to come to. Um, in your presenting, in practicing, and that's when you know I've practiced enough. So you have to practice many times. You can't win the presentation, especially in a competition, uh, because or in any presentation, as a matter of fact, because then you will be very unprepared, and your audience will definitely zone out. Okay, so practice. Uh, for my 3MT, uh, there were many stages. So first, it was at the faculty level. Um, at the faculty level, I didn't have a coach. It was just my co-supervisor um, telling me, oh, OK, this is OK, this is that. So when I entered the university level, I started to have coaches, right? And um, they're OK. I mean, they're, they're, they're good. They're great coaches, no doubt. Uh, but it was when I was about to go for the um, national level, I had a very that, that I had an excellent coach. Um, and she, you know what she did? She took my script, my original script, and she literally just uh, changed almost everything. Not, not in a bad way, in a good way, in the sense that we discussed about it and she mentored me on how to say it properly. And, uh, and I had to practice in front of her like for months. Like, Four months like every day i will go to the sgs we spend like half an hour to many hours <laughs> to practice and um my problem is that my voice projection i have a very soft voice and it doesn't come across it to the whole room and that's that's a problem so i have to project my voice again and again and i can only achieve that when i practice also this competition again uh, what matters is that your audience understand and your audience are from many different fields. So another way to practice is to present in front of your friends, especially friends who are not in the same field. So you know that they understand your presentation or you can present in front of your parents or in front of your sister. Uh, my biggest critique is my sister. So I had to present in front of her <laughs> because of my soft voice, she said that my voice sounded like a cartoon. Uh, I might sound like a cartoon right now as well, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> so I, then I knew, oh, okay, I had to, you know, um, do something about my voice. So I won't know that if I don't practice in front of these, in front of these people. Uh, so that's a tip. Another tip is also to practice in front of the mirror. Why? It, it, because it's a bit weird to see yourself in front of the mirror, right? And you tend to take out all these small little details of like, oh, you shouldn't be saying that. Way. You shouldn't be saying that. Way. Other people might not notice it, but you notice it. You will only notice it if you present in the mirror. And that's important because you want to make sure that you're presenting in the, your most comfortable time. So present in the mirror. And also, you have a time limit, right? You have five minutes. So again, you have to time your presentation. Uh, do it, uh, say you have five minutes, make sure your presentation is about four minutes and 55 seconds or so. Don't, don't make it like on the dot five minutes because they're gonna cut you off at five minutes. And when you're on the stage or when you're presenting, 
the nerves, the anxiety, it's gonna delay you. So make sure that you tailor your presentation five minutes before the actual time. So uh, practice, practice, and practice. Second tip is to be authentic and be yourself. Why does this matter? Because you yourself have to be comfortable with what you're seeing, okay? So this hit me when uh, I was going for the international level, Asia Pacific. So we had uh, a previous winner to coach me, okay? And uh, he is the kind who likes to make jokes. And uh, I'm not, I don't like to make jokes that much. And it makes me uncomfortable. So he suggested that, okay, you should, you should uh, start with, with this kind of joke which when which which i didn't really feel and then he said okay you should uh exaggerate on how people are dying of dengue when you know that yeah people are dying but like um you know it's not like everyone on the street are dying you know but he but 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 that's the thing that he what he was telling me to do which is great great advice it's just that it's not me and if I were to say it, people are not going to believe me because I don't believe myself, right? So I said, okay, uh, I can start with something humorous, but maybe not that joke. So, so I have to be authentic. I have to be true to myself. If you're the kind um, who's, who's not rigid, right? Who's a bit laid back, then show that in your script. Don't go problem statement, pop, 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 methodology, pop, pop. That's not you. Again, that's robotic. People are not going to believe what you're saying because it's not believable. So be authentic, be yourself. Also, in here, how you dress up, right? Okay, I'm not saying that you can simply dress uh, however it is that you want. It has to also conform to the formality of the event. Uh, just give me one moment. Okay, sorry, I need to charge. Okay, so, um, but uh, dress up that, that makes you feel confident about yourself. That's important. Okay. And tip three is confidence. So you want people to believe in you, you have to be confident in yourself. And you can only be confident when you have practice and when you believe in every single word that you say. So in your script, again, make sure whatever word that you say, you know what it is and you believe in them. Okay, if you're saying uh, your project um, does this, this and that, uh, you're just saying it simply because, but you don't actually believe it, then it's, uh, it will come off as something unbelievable. Okay, and confidence in another sense is that everyone can speak and everyone's voice should be heard, regardless of how you don't like public speaking. So I didn't like public speaking. Oh, so what generated my confidence was uh, throughout my journey, despite me not liking public speaking, I um, I discovered that I love teaching. Mm. Um, I love sharing people what I know. And um, I, I also love discussing ideas um, and making things simple for people to understand. Okay, and, and with that passion, I channel it to whenever it is that I, whenever I have to speak in front of the public. So uh, let's say it's a competition. My mentality is not, oh, I have to do this so that I can win. I have to do this to win, uh, no because I know I will get nervous, I won't believe in that, and it will just all go sucking. So no, instead, uh, my mentality would be, I believe in what I do, and I would like to share it with people. Uh, and when I think that, I feel that, and I'll be more comfortable with myself and more confident with what I, what I have to say. So confidence is key. And I think that's the final out there. So with all the tips that I've given you, uh, it has led me through this journey of public speaking competition, despite me not liking it. But 
in the end of the day, it has given me a very good skill. Okay. And, and, and the more I do it, the more I get used to it. And at the end of the day, it becomes something that, like, you know, hey, it's not going to kill me in the end. Uh, everybody, I, I just need to speak. And it becomes a normal thing. And now that I'm with the startup, I have to do pitches. Okay, so I have to pitch our product to funders and investors, and they are more scary than uh, academic judges or in these kind of competitions because they're going to scrutinize you to, to the very detail. So um, that's a whole new other thing. Uh, but um, but I cannot gain such confidence if I do not practice and. And, and, and this skill is important, regardless of what you do in life. Okay, if you're going to be a researcher, it's very important to know how to present. If you're going to be a businessman, you have to know how to present. Um, my baby's crying. So, okay. Um, yeah, so practice and acquire this skill because it's going to do wonders for you throughout your journey. So uh, these are pictures of different occasions uh, at faculty level, university level, and also the Asia Pacific level. And I couldn't have done it without my support team. Oh, support team is important as well because uh, you have to have your team, you know, to you know to to tell you that hey, what you're doing is right, or to tell you hey, what you're doing is wrong, and to 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 generate that confidence in you as well. So these are the people that helped me throughout. And I wouldn't be where I am if not for them in the three minute thesis journey. So thank you very much to them. And uh, that is basically how I will end my uh, presentation for today and my experience so far. So, yeah. Um, I welcome any questions if you have. Okay, thank you very much. Dr. Yasmin, that was a really uh, very um, a good speech with a lot of tips. So what I what I get to take note is on the hook, on the bite, and and the fish uh, technique, and then on the solution that um, in order to layman the jargon words or technical terms, yeah, you can you can do um, you can use analogy. And um, on the confidence level, actually, when you yeah, when you understand and you love what you're doing and you're sharing sharing what you're doing, but doing then you are able to feel yeah and, and present uh, what you are doing um, in a confidence way and in an honest way of sharing that uh, information. Okay, so. Um, now we open for questions from all the participants. Hi, I have a question. Yes. All right. Hi. So, yeah, yeah. My name is Suzari Shah. All right. Mm -hmm. So, I would like to ask um, how would you eliminate nervousness whenever you are presenting? All right. That oh. is my first question. And the second question is, um, uh, sometimes we stutter during presentation because we, we can't uh, remember what are the contents that we, that we are going to say. So how are we going to um, reduce that or maybe eliminate that, perhaps? Okay, uh, thank you very much for the question, Suzaria. Uh, so for your first question, how do we eliminate nervousness? Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, so... Um, Again, again, practice will help, most definitely. But when you get on the stage, right, sometimes you just go blank. And, and then when you see everyone in front of you, you know, you can't help but to feel anxious about it. So a tip that was given to me was um, when you look at your audience, imagine that they are all <laughs> uh, in their underpants. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean? Uh, meaning, in, I mean, it's, it's not a good image, but uh, it, it will just calm your nerves for a bit. So if you imagine your audience is, okay, let's say they're, they're wearing something very funny. So, so you imagine your audience wearing something funny, 
it will just calm your nerves for a bit. The actual thing is actually imagining your audience naked, but that's just not a good advice. But it does work, okay? <laughs> so, so, so then, you know, it's, it's like you're in front of a lion and you're in front of a cat, right? So you get less anxious when you're in front of a cat. So it's all in here. So you have to imagine uh, once you're up there, think of a thought that will calm you down. Okay, so uh, that's one thing. I hope that helps. Second, in terms of your, uh, to eliminate stutter. Okay, um, again, practice. But second tip is, the audience do not know your script. Okay, so even if you make a mistake, even if you stutter, they won't know it's wrong. Okay? It, and stutter here means uh, if you have ah uh, or you, you know, you say something wrong, they don't know if it's wrong unless if you show it's wrong. Okay? So uh, just flow with it. You know, when, whenever you, you know you're saying something wrong, you just go with it and come back to, to what you're supposed to say in the very beginning. Because in my uh, final competition, uh, I think I, I did say a different word than, than it was supposed to be. And that kind of threw me off for like a few seconds because I was like, oh my God, I said something wrong. Oh, uh, but uh, I somehow I managed to uh, regain back my pace. But uh, how I did that was just simply, you know what, they don't know if I'm saying the wrong thing. It still means the same and just, act like everything's cool so that 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 works um but if you really want to eliminate these two it's practice you just need to practice practice in front if 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 the public gets you nervous practice in front of the public um i don't know go go someplace but with covid it's, it's a bit difficult but you know you can go someplace and just hey uh, can you listen to my speech for a moment or uh you know to practice that and and so that you know okay, it's something normal it's not something scary and that will calm you down yeah thank you so much you are, you have been very helpful to me oh, you're welcome thank you for the advices too thank you do we have anyone else uh hi hello prakash. Uh, i'm prakash here from mc newsd so mm -hmm. I'd like to ask a question regarding, uh, because our presentation for the composition will be on online. So we have to do one static slide with a video on it. So do you have any advice on that on how we are going to go for the body language on the online presentations and so on? And how do we prepare the static slides? Is there will be one page of slide. Yeah, so uh, thank you very much Prakash for your question. I'm not sure um, if, if there is a, a format, an, an actual format for it in the competition, or if everyone's free to do, uh, to be creative and do whatever. Um, but um, uh, this year, some a few months ago, I had to uh, mentor, okay, okay, sorry. I had to mentor uh, a student from UPM for a competition and it was an online virtual competition as well. So uh, one thing about it being virtual, you can't make mistakes, right? Because you're pre-recording it and, and they expect your script to be perfect. So, so that's one thing. The second thing on how to get both your slide and you yourself um, there, what you can do is perhaps um, what I would do, I would create a video that has my slide and then me in my video uh, at like a corner uh, there, uh, waist above, so that they can see my gestures. I mean, like in this video itself, if say like it's without my hand, it's just me like that. It's not interesting. You won't understand what I do. So um, that's what I would do. I would record myself waist up. Uh, put that video at a bottom corner of my slide and then just blast my slide at the rest of the space. Um, and noting that, make sure your slide has a space for your video. 
that, uh, so, so, you know, you won't be covering up anything that's on the slide. So that's one thing. Another way uh, that, that I see people do is they actually record themselves in a lecture room and then they put their slide in some display and they present next to it. Uh, you can do that too. It's just that uh, your audience might not be able to clearly see and appreciate your slide because now it's like a double double filter, you know? So uh, again, these visuals, they, they need to be clear and they need to be um, exciting. And, uh, you know, if you watch a movie and the resolution sucks, you won't like the movie, right? But if you see a movie with like high definition and whatnot, you'll be more engaged to it. So I would prefer having my slide up and me, my video in the corner. Uh, that's what else did I see? Oh, I also saw some use uh, their own universities. Uh, how do you say this tech tech department that they kind of like did a green screen and uh, they have the person uh, presenting and the slide like someplace. But uh, that's a bit too. I mean, if you can get your supervisors or if you can do it yourself in your room, then by all means go create it. Uh, yeah, but a simple way would be how I've suggested, just with your slide up and your video on the side. Yeah, uh, Prakash. Thank you. Thank you for your advice, ma'am. You're welcome. Prakash, yeah. and all, uh, regarding the format of the presentation, yeah, you can do like what Dr. Yasmin said. You have to have your video visual at the corner of your slide. And the slide, you can follow what Dr. Yasmin suggested, okay, to have that. Uh, an image of the chronology of the or infographic about the process of your final year project, something like that. Okay, and then yeah, it's good to have your video to be uh, visualized from your waist and above. So yeah, you can show your body language to the judge. Yeah. Okay, any other question? Okay, uh, Dr. Yasmin, maybe I can ask you, um, okay, from all of your experience, what are the, I mean, what are the, uh, some of the mistakes, I mean, uh, the major mistakes that may happen, uh, that may, uh, done by all these participants that you have um, seen? Okay, so um, major mistakes. Uh, the most obvious mistake uh, that one can do is with their slides. Okay, so because the moment before you, you, you say anything, they will just pop your slide up. And from there, you can tell, oh, he's made a mistake here. So this slide, this slide, it's one slide for a reason, right? And it allows us to put a slide there for a reason. So a mistake here can mean he writes his, uh, he writes his whole script on the slide. So from there, I knew, okay, uh, he's gonna get some points off from there. A uh, second color scheme of the slide, uh, if it's not engaging, then we know, okay, uh, something wrong there. Uh, um, of course, spelling and whatnot. So make sure you perfect your slide. Make sure your slide is nice and uh, easy to look at. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, Jayong also mentioned that you need to have uh, a, a more of white space than your actual thing. It will help. It will help the audience focus on what you are trying to show. And it will help with them visualizing your idea. So the slide, um, that's one. Second, they tend to go um, beyond the time limit, some, some of the contestants. And that's a major mistake. They will, uh, the judges will just cut them off. And some, in some competitions, you will just be disqualified. So again, that can only be overcome with practice and um, be sure you practice against time. Uh, what else? Um, okay, again, you have to adjust, you have to know your audience. That's another thing as well. You have to know your audience. Uh, sometimes 
you're, you're presenting the same idea, okay? But you're presenting it to different audience. You have to change your presentation every time when it's to a different audience because you have to cater to what they, they're looking for, to what they expect. So sometimes when I attend um, pitches and say a researcher uh, presents, um, they tend to get too technical. So when they, they, they tend to get too technical, they don't emphasize on the, um, on the profit. And so uh, your investors will zone out. Same goes with, um, say, if you're going for a competition, right? And you get too, you know that you're supposed to be uh, saying things in a layman term. You know that your audience is generic, but here you go saying all these jargon, all these like, words that people can't relate to. So, um, you really need to know your audience so that you can avoid that mistake. Um, in terms of language, okay, I know that some of you are, some of us are not confident to speak because we think we're not good in English. Or if you're supposed to present in, in Malay or in other language, you think you're not good in that language. So, um, to be frank with you, uh, I've been, I've, uh, I've attended schools overseas, okay, when I was uh, younger, and grammar did not matter to them at that point. So, uh, so what, what matters to them, what they want to emphasize is you speak out. You have to have that confidence first, and then you correct yourself later. Grammar comes second. So you have to have that confidence first. Um, so some people get flustered or get anxious with that, and that they get very nervous, and that will just ruin their whole presentation because they're scared of that. So, uh, and it cause it cause mistakes. So that's something that um, you need to, you know, you need to uh, be, uh, you need to, uh, you need to hold back. That is something that you need to know does not matter much. Okay? And it can be overcome with having a proper script, right? So, uh, what I'm trying to say here is don't be timid by how bad you think you are with language because it doesn't matter much, so especially when you have a script. Okay, so um, what else? Yeah, I, think, I think those are the major uh, mistakes so far that I've seen. Slides go over the limit, uh, the time limit and they don't address, their the presentation does not tailor to the right audience. So for example, for your five minute FYP, you have to be clear on what they want, on what these judges want. Um, you have to be clear on um, what, you want and what you want to convey to them. Okay. So, but then if you say, if you're going for a Viva, you have to be technical. You can't give your five minute uh, FYP speech in your Viva. You know, you're, you're, you're going to, uh, you will have to visit the Bible if you do that. So, so yeah, you, knowing your audience is very important. Okay. Uh, we, we have one question from No Shakina's Investing. Good morning, Dr. Okay. I would like to ask, do you have any opinion on how to explain the result based on graph without showing the graph to the audience? Oh. Okay, okay, so um, remember that I mentioned when you write your uh, script in your opening it has to have a problem, okay? So in my case, the problem is that the sensor is not, um, the sensor is not fast enough. And the dengue sensor around the world is not fast enough to get results. Now, uh, in my results, in my results section in my script, like I have many results that I can show. For example, uh, affinity constant, sensitivity, selectivity, and all these numbers, okay, and graphs. But which result actually matters in this speech? It all goes back to your opening. It all goes back to what you have set in your scene. So what I'm trying to say here is, um, for example, for my curry pop uh, example, I just know, uh, I, I don't have to say the resolution of the scanner or whatnot. I only mentioned the accuracy. 
percentage of the accuracy because that only that's the only thing that matters in that speech and that's what i want others to appreciate about my work and that's what is going to get me other people to come and say oh your scanner is pretty accurate what else can it do ah that is when i get technical with them so um my advice is first uh, identify the problem identify what you're saying in the beginning what, which problem that you're highlighting and then in, in the results you just say that one result that solves the problem and then uh, and then i did mention to mention the other three unique traits of your solution um, those does not have to be in terms of results it's just a character a, a criteria of your solution. Uh, so again, again, you have to understand that this competition is not, it's not the kind that that that, that they want to see results. They want to see graphs. It's not that kind of uh, competition. It's just a competition that that um, that wants students to learn to convey ideas, ideas and solutions. And that's it. so. So their uh, results in terms of graphs are unnecessary throughout my uh, journey. That that's what I've seen, um, and I think it's the same case for this competition as well. Uh, but I'm not saying you can't put graphs or you can't put uh, statistics. Oh, you can go ahead and do so. But what I'm saying is you don't have to be too technical about it. Uh, and in terms of choosing which result to put relate it back to your opening, organize your ideas, and then extract which parts that you should put in your presentation. And from there, you will figure out how to present your uh, result. That's my suggestion. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Yasmin. Well, um, I, I did watch your video on the, uh, uh, where, the one that you won for the um, Asia. Mm -hmm. um, and you did uh, represent your data by making an analogy. The amount is equal to the population in Australia, something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's true. So, uh, oh, that, that wasn't my result. The one with population in Australia is the number of people um, uh, infected with dengue. Uh -huh, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, you can also present it with an analogy or with something that can relate, that the audience can relate. Oh, that's another good, thank you very much for highlighting that. Um, again, with knowing your audience, when I presented in the national level, I tweaked that part to population of Malaysia because my audience are Malaysians. Then when I went to Australia, I tweaked that part and instead set it in population of Australia. Of course, the numbers change. But uh, yeah, so uh, that's one way that you can present your results in, instead of using cross and um, uh, charts. So using analogies, that's right. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, um, another one, Doctor, can you share some tips on uh, about their body language? Oh, okay. So um, body language. Um, <laughs> see I would say that uh, yes I would say that um, it has to be moderate okay moderate in terms of you cannot not be moving you can't be just static but at the same time you cannot move too much because then people will will think you're weird so, so they'll be distracted they'll be like oh why is she moving too much so um, you have to your posture you have to uh, stand up straight, do not slouch. And um, in terms of gesture, I think what's most important is uh, the tone, intonation of your presentation. So, uh, in, in, you know, honesty, as, uh, in terms of which sentence should you say faster? Which sentence should you say you should emphasize? And when you emphasize something, then you go this, this, and that. That, then your gestures will follow your, your intonation. Uh, for example, uh, let's say I want to say my sensor is sensitive, selective, and uh, rapid, right? So I would go 
the dengue sensor is sensitive, selective, and rapid. Ah, so uh, you you have to know when to pause. You have to know when to see when to emphasize certain things, and when you emphasize certain things, your body language should show that you're emphasizing it. You can't go. It should be sensitive, selective, and rapid. I mean, like people would oh, what what's wrong with her? Right. So so you have to. Um, my tip is just to be yourself, to be honest. Think of it like you're having a conversation with someone, you know, and somehow with that, gestures will follow. Uh, my coaches, that, that's one thing that they, they advise me on, not to go overboard and not to not do any, any gestures. And since you're recording it, I think it's more simple because, uh, when you're presenting it in front of, on the stage, you have that um, tendency to be walking here and there. And that, that's kind of distracting. And, and where you stand matters, those kind of things. But now that it's virtual, um, it's a bit easier. And, and since it's just waste up. So um, you record yourself and then watch it again. And then if you think it's weird, then there's something wrong. Uh, if you feel like it's natural, it's genuine, show it to other people as well. Tell them, ask them, do you this, does this seem genuine? And then if it does, then uh, you're on the right track. So, yeah. So, uh, Doctor, like uh, kids' storytelling, right? We can see when the kids are doing the storytelling, they try to express okay, the lines by like jumping or uh, raising up their hands. Do you think that works for a scientific presentation? This science <laughs> that, that we call science communication, like this. Uh -huh. um, okay, so there has to be a little sense of maturity as well in your speech, and it, it reflects to how you respect your audience. So I'm not saying jumping around and whatnot is inappropriate, like. Um, you can do so, but you have to know the line between it being appropriate and not being appropriate. And uh, it's okay to exaggerate things that you want to emphasize. Uh, I was given this tip actually. Uh, he said, uh, the, the coach said, okay, if it's big, then you should show it with your hands. Like, big, something, something, something. Right? Uh, but then I reflect upon it and I said, um, however, that's not how I would how I would do whenever I converse with people. I won't go, uh, hey, do you know that this is very big? I mean, you know, if it's not natural to me, I won't do it. Uh, but will it work in scientific communication? It, I think it's, it's, um, it's a trial and error. Uh, it doesn't work all the time, uh, but there are times where it's, it will help. So, you have to try it out, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. yeah thank you, Doctor. Mm -hmm. uh, well, well, I think it's always back to how comfortable you are, right? So yeah. when you're comfortable, then your audience will also feel the comfortable of accepting that information. Yeah, right? that's, right. that's right. I mean, if you're the kind that, that you know, you're, you're very happy and very joyous about whatever it is that you say, you tend to jump up and I'm like, if you're that kind and it shows in your presentation, then by all means, you, you seem comfortable with it, people will be weirded out. And people will believe, in, oh, what she's doing is actually right, there's nothing wrong about it. But if you're the kind that's all quiet and all of a sudden you're like this and that and that, and then it becomes unbelievable. And you, you yourself will feel uncomfortable. So again, that's right, Lynn, you have to be comfortable with what you're presenting. Only then it will be believable. Mm. Thank you, thank you, Doctor. Uh, do we have any other questions? Okay, we have Dr. Haru now online with us. Oh. It is video on. Hello. Assalamu alaikum. Hello, Yasmin. Okay. okay, thank you very much, Dr. Yasmin, for a very nice session. Uh, I am listening since the beginning, and uh, I hope all the participants are also enjoying. Uh, thank you very much for being our speaker for today. Hope uh, students are grasping a lot of things. So if there are still more questions, I think students should ask. 
uh, should not be hesitant to ask any of the questions. Okay, okay. I have a uh, question first of all, okay. So my question is, did we need to introduce ourselves in the beginning of our like DC speech or something like that? Okay, um, good question, Dominic. Well, introducing yourself, it can come at any point of your presentation. So, for example, uh, there are certain styles where, where you know, you will tell your problem statement, you will say, um, the situation is getting bad, blah, blah, blah. And then you go, I'm Yasmin, I'm a, a professional expert, and I'm here to help. Ah. That's one way of, of uh, introducing yourself. There's also another way where you say it out straight in the very beginning. Uh, hi, good morning, my name is Yasmin, and today I would like to present blah, blah, blah. So, but that is a very uh, common approach, I would say. Nothing wrong with it. Uh, if you like to do so, go ahead. But um, there are different ways. It doesn't have to be in the beginning of your presentation when you want to introduce yourself. You can be creative about it. Uh, must you introduce yourself? When, during my 3MT, um, because there's a time limit, I, I don't think I introduced myself. I don't think I went and said, hi, I'm Yasmin. Because uh, it has already uh, presented, or I've been already introduced as Yasmin Mustafa, a PhD student. So uh, I didn't really have to do that. However, if you want your audience to, re if it's relatable to your audience, let's say I have, uh, my audience are all from the biological field and I want them to be confident with what I'm saying. So I would go, um, so during my biomedical engineering um, years in EPM, uh, then they will know, oh, she has a biomedical engineering background. Then it will be relatable to them and it, it just fits in, you know? So everything you say has to have a purpose. So, and um, yeah, so to answer your question, Dominic, must you introduce yourself? Um, not necessarily, but if you want to, you, you can come at any time of your presentation. You can be creative about it. Yeah. Okay, so my another question. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have the problem. So let's say I give, I give an example. Lah, okay, mm -hmm. I have the problem. I have a solution. But in other ways, uh, the solution has another problem. How do I compare that, that kind of, that kind of, that kind of my, my PC something? Okay. Um, uh, have you solved this other problem? I mean, I have the problem. I have the common solution, but I have another like like similar similar like feasibility problems. Like 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 whether this one can apply in this kind of this kind of whether this this kind of method can be applied on this kind of country or not. I see. Okay. Then. After that, I prove that this one can be solved. This one, this 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 kind of this kind of solution can be applied in another country. That's why this one I can solve it. Mm. So I, I compare that. How, how do I compare that in my how do I compare that in my speech? Huh? Can I can I say like I I state I first of all I state uh, uh I state the questions then I state uh I state the problem first. I state the initial problem first then. I set a common problem first, then I set a common solution, then I I set the feasibility problems, then I I conclude with my methodology and my solution or my results. That, mm. that way I can or not? Uh, that kind of way. Well, it sounds okay to me. Um, because as how you've mentioned, as how you've tried to convey your problem to me, I, I understood what it was. So what, what you're doing at the moment is, is okay. It's just that, um, oh, here's another thing. Um, your experiments do not, uh, do not have to have a positive outcome, right? Uh, it, if you don't have any results, it doesn't mean you, you, you're, your, your project is bad. A negative outcome is a result as well. That's one thing we have to know as a researcher, and it will help throughout your studies. So don't be one. Don't be disappointed if you get zero or negative results. It's fine. It's part of results. Okay. Uh, second, it's good that you address these problems as well, uh, so that 
you're being truthful to the audience, okay? and the audience will definitely appreciate that. Um, however, there are many things that you want to say about your experiment, right? But you only have five minutes. Mm. So you have to choose the things that, uh, that are important that you want to say at that particular time. For example, my dengue sensor. My dengue sensor is, has, is sensitive, it's also specific, and I've also tested it with other things, but I can't say all that in my speech because I didn't have time for it, okay? So I, I chose a story as in um, an outline of, of my ideas I created one story to cater to one, uh, one presentation, and that's that. If they want to know more, um, they can come to me, and I will tell them. So, Dominic, you have to, again, uh, organize your ideas. Try to use the, the canvas that I gave you, and then when you have your ideas in front of you, you can extract them and then choose which, one, which important idea it is, uh, that you want to put in your presentation this time around. You don't have to put everything, uh, but at least you get to choose. Uh, if you have the time, if you can put everything, by all means. It's just that uh, we don't have, I didn't have the time, I couldn't. And I think it's the same <clears throat> as most of us, because we have so many things we want to say. So that's a challenge in this kind of competition. So again, uh, get your ideas, organize them, and then choose which story do you want to tell? Do you want to tell the world that your solution has a problem and you can fix that? Or do you want to tell the world there's a problem, here's the solution? Uh, or you want to tell the world there's a problem, here's a solution. Oh, but this solution has a problem. So, um, however, I hope that blah, blah, blah. Choose your narrative. Choose the story that you want to tell. So I got another question. Sorry, uh. I really got yeah. another question. Okay. It's so okay. because because I my my speech, uh, I got a lot of technical terms. I scare people mm -hmm. don't know. So whether I can use the definition of the technical terms or not. Oh. I use a lot of I use a lot of I scare because I, I use a lot of technical terms. That I say I scare a lot, I use a lot of technical terms. Then I put the technical terms in the definition there. I put technical term different de definition of the technical terms are in the common way, more common way lah. Okay. Uh, I, I mean, can I do can I do something like I, I put a definition my speech I can like I put a definition there I put a like a technical term and then a definition there I put a few of them lah. Okay, so I uh, can people you, really don't know. <laughs> can you share with me one technical term that you're solar uh, panels. Ah, okay, okay. That one is, that okay. one is, uh, that one is more common term maybe. I got one more technical yeah. term. Uh. Yeah. Give me the, the most technical term that you have. Photobotet. Oh, photobotet, okay. Okay, so let's say, um, okay, this term, does it come out often in your script? It comes out often in my script because I got application in photobotet systems. Mm, okay. So um, what I would suggest, we don't usually put definitions on our slide, but if it's a very important term, we can uh, instead help the audience to visualize it. In other words, do you, is it a main concept in your, in your, uh, uh, is a very super main concept for my, for my, for my, that's why okay. entire. So, okay, so then, um, Perhaps you can put, instead of words, you can put a picture that explains it. Okay. Also, you, you cannot do, you, do you, you can't afford to do for all of the technical terms that you have. You can't have like, all these pictures for all the technical terms that you want to use. So you have to get creative with it. Some, uh, the main concept is worth putting in your slide. However, if you still have other technical terms in your script, that you think you need to define, I would suggest you to, do you have a, 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 a younger sibling? I don't have a younger sibling, I'm the youngest. Oh, <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, uh, do you have friends of other fields? I, I think I have, uh, I have, uh, I, I will try okay. to contact them or something yes. like that. Uh. 
I okay. try, uh, I try to record my own video, but because I have, I have my ideas, I have my slides, I have my speech already. But I'm really scared that because the competition is like, you want to, you want to make a common terms, you know, you want to make a common mm -hmm. terms. I, I really know that you want to make the audience is a, the audience is a lot. So some audience like like, like five years old, to seventy years old, like like it's a very common terms for for for, for us. So we, we actually we know about our technical terms, we know, but audience doesn't know. So I know I know the situation, but. Then I want to do something that I I because I want to put this particular term so the the audience should be should should really know really know this kind of concept. Okay. So even okay. even I I also think about it. I want to use some props, you know. Ah, okay. I'm not sure if that's allowed in the competition for three MP. We we're not allowed to use props, but if it's allowed, then go ahead and use them. Okay. My advice would be. Um, if it's a very important concept, use analogies to explain this concept first so that your audience will understand, oh, this is what he's talking about and they can relate throughout your presentation. How to get the right analogy? You can try to explain the concept with those who are not from your field and to, to, and to see if they understand or not what you're saying. You can try and try to be as uh, layman as you can with them until they understand. Try many times. And then uh, once they go, oh, yeah, I understand that. That's the right way for you to explain. If they go, huh, what? Uh, then that means you have to try more, uh, again with them. So that, that's an important tool for you to, I mean, that can help with your uh, situation. Dr. Harun, I'm sure you have something to add to this. Uh, well, uh... I am listening, Dr. Yasmin. Um, well, the question uh, what Dominic asked, uh, uh, it's one of the questions that I think most of the students, they have in their mind, uh, especially those who, uh, when the uh, students join for 3MT, Dr. Yasmin will agree with me that they, the students also have the same concept in their mind. But in 3MT, Similarly, we don't talk about the technical uh, things at the focus. Our main focus is on communication. That's the main thing we are focusing in five minute FYP as well, that you will not be evaluated based on your technical content of your topic or your project. Our purpose is you explain your project in five minutes in a layman language or in such a language that what Dr. Yasmi mentioned that if you have uh, younger siblings or if you have someone who is not from your field, they are able to understand your concept. They must get the idea what you are trying to explain. So if they are able to understand your idea, this is your first evaluator, your first judge at your own home. If they are able to understand what you are all talking about, then you should consider that you are really eligible to be part of this competition and you will win it because this is the main concept if you look at the objectives we are not talking about technical things yes i agree uh, sometimes there are technical terms which we cannot avoid like uh, in dr yasmin case dengue you cannot avoid dengue with any other thing sensor you cannot avoid sensor by any other thing but when you are talking about these things if let's say you are talking about sensor if someone who is totally have no idea what is sensor, you will use some kind of thing to tell them what exactly is that. So first explain in just five to 10 seconds what you are going to talk all about. So I will recommend to all the participants, uh, uh, we had like uh, three, today is the third grooming session. We had three wonderful speakers. They have given you a lot of tips and tricks. Go through, watch these videos again, they're recording. And not only that, you still have time until 19th is the deadline. You can watch a couple of videos from internet, which are about three minute pieces. You can just go to YouTube. At YouTube, you will find all those things. And not only from Malaysia, 3MT is a worldwide uh, competition. So you will find the videos of many speakers. Then you will see, you need to see practically examples. That is your job basically. We cannot show you everything in the in this uh, grooming session. So some of the things are your, you have to do your homework and then you will find more ideas. But if you will still have some questions, we always have a support team. You can ask in that group. 
I hope I have uh, answered to most of you, those of you who had the confusions in this point. Okay, may, may, I, may I add a little bit? Okay, if you look at uh, Dr. Yasmin's presentation, um, how she represents about the um, fiber optic. Okay, fiber optic is, a, is kind of technical terms. If you don't understand it, uh, people won't understand it. But, but when she explained in terms of a tunnel that people can uh, visualize, and imagine, so it would be easy. And maybe, uh, Dominic, you can also say, okay, photovoltaic is PVO, or uh, common people call it solar panel, right? Yes. You can mention solar panel. And maybe you can also highlight solar, um, solar panel is different between solar system. Sometimes they say solar system, right? <laughs> okay, and then, and then you can, maybe you can also say, okay, start from this, you're going to say SPV. You would say as photovoltaic. So it depends, depends on that. But maybe we have to have like, like Dr. Harun says, five to ten seconds to explain with an analogy that they can visualize. Uh, would well, that help? Dominic, especially in your case, um, if you are talking about SPV, solar photovoltaic. Mm. I mean, if you just talk about solar cell, it is enough. People know about it. In fact, I'm from the same field. So we even don't use this term photovoltaic quite often because not many people, they like easily this word comes at the tongue and they don't understand like what is photovoltaic. So whenever we are talking, we just simply say solar cell or solar. So, I mean, you can use some those kind of analogies which are quite common, common terms, which everybody can understand. And I believe you are brilliant in your field. You know what are the other synonyms you can use and how you can represent your idea. And you can discuss always with your supervisors because they are your first mentors. Um, okay, what I also see, you know, in com science communication, the challenge for people, uh, for we technical uh, people, we have all of this information and we want to put it into five minutes. So we have to select. If you're going to talk about the solar cell, about the electrons moving to the conduction band and then release the photons, if you're going to focus on that, then focus on that, make, make the layman on that particular point. So you have to actually select, just like what Dr. Yasmin said, you have everything, you want to tell everything, you select, then from there, I think, yeah, you can convert to, uh, you will be, it's easier for you to choose which one to make it layman after, after you select, you make your script. You know, the first step is to, to do the script. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all, thank you for all. I, 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 I mean, I have the idea already, but I really want to say about my issues, my issues here only. La. True, true. <laughs> thank you, script, thank you. Script is important. I, I, I like the way that Dr. Yasmin. Oh. <laughs> I try it first, I try it first. Okay, all the best, Dominic. Mm. You can do this. You got this. Mm -hmm. Okay, we, so we have a question from Go. Uh, may I know how are we going to submit the video? video? Okay, we are going to re to give the link okay, for submission uh, this Friday. Okay, any other question? Okay, so if we don't have any questions, I think for the time being, you can always drop uh, any question in the WhatsApp group. Okay, so now I'm gonna I'm going to share the link for the feedback form. Okay, we're going to close around about 15 minutes. Okay, before we end, um, Dr. Yasmin, do you have any last words? Uh, okay, uh, well, all the best to everyone uh, for your competition. Um, remember to be clear on why you're there, why you're presenting, because it matters and because it will reflect in your presentation. Um, no one is a, there's no such thing as a bad voice Everyone has a beautiful voice. Uh, it's it's every and it's it's very valuable for everyone else to be heard. So be confident with your voice, and uh, use this opportunity to um, master this skill because it's very important. So I first of all props to every one of you to participating in such a competition. Uh, not everyone has the courage to do so, and I'm so happy that there are many of you are courageous enough to do it. Um, and all the best. I hope I've helped enough. Um, if you need more input from me, 
um, I will share my email address in the chat box and you can just drop me an email, ask me anything. If you want me to look over your script, uh, I can do that as well because I've been doing it you know, for uh, others. If you want me to help, yeah, I'm up for it. And like, especially now that we're working from home. So uh, I, I think I have time for that, provided that my baby allows it as well. So um, yeah. Uh, Ask anything if you and I'm here to support you guys as well. Thank you very much, Dr. Yasmin. Yeah, I think I, I, I hear the baby voice in the background. Yeah, I'm sorry <laughs> that like distracted you guys. <laughs> okay, okay. okay Dr. Harun, any last word from you? Uh, I would say once again, thank you very very much to Dr. Yasmin and thanks for, um, I mean, giving privilege to our participants that they can even contact you after the workshop as well, if they have any questions. Uh, uh, so it is really helpful that uh, uh, your your presentation, I'm very sure, I'm very sure students have uh, caught on a lot of things. In fact, for myself, I have learned a lot of things. I had some other commitments. I left those when I, the presentation started. I'd say, let me focus here first. <laughs> so thank you very much for that. Dr. Yasmin's email address is here so students can see. And uh, for all the participants, um, I think now before we conclude, uh, we will take uh, uh, a group photo. And uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is the last grooming session for this competition, before this uh, competition participation starts. So now the video link we have earlier shared. And again, we will share the video link of today's recording as well. And then uh, I expect all the participants can uh, watch them and then go through and groom yourself very well and uh, follow the deadlines as there are no more extension going to be given in the semi-final things because semi-final is the short, short final date. Only we extended because a lot of students were asking us to join the grooming workshop, so we extended. But for uh, uh, semi-final, there will be no deadline. So plan yourself very well. This Friday, we will release the, uh, the, the link for you to upload the video and you will be filling up the form together with the video. And then uh, simply you will be able to join the semi-final. So if in case of any questions, anything, just ask in the support team group. And uh, I wish you all the best. Good luck to all of you. And I wish, I wish, I really wish that uh, all of you win the semi-final. So that's all from my side. Thank you very much. And uh, I think I over the session to now uh, Lynn to take care of the photo session and concluding remarks. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Yasmin, Dr. Harun, thank you very much. Okay, everyone, can you all open your camera? Okay, Lynn, keep going, Ben Min Heng, no Elina. Okay, so smile. Okay, we're gonna have, um, I think, around three panel, uh, three pan pain, okay, to be uh, captured. Okay, smile. One. Hold on, hold on. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, so I'm, that's the first one. Okay, another one. Okay, smile everyone. Or Akila Adam, can you open your camera? Nor Alia. Okay, one, two, three. One. Okay, the last one. Okay, Farahia Hardy, open your camera. Okay, smile. One, two, three. Okay, so with that, I think, uh, yeah, uh, this is going to be our last grooming, this is our last grooming session, okay? So thank you very much again. Okay, so see you guys in semi-final. Okay, thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you.